Hello, welcome to World History Day 31. This is 31C. This will be our last lecture for today. And uh, it wasn't 10,000 thumbs. The Colosseum was made to hold and was often packed with 50,000 spectators to watch people horrifically die. 100,000 thumbs. Scarring the consciences of all those people. I just can't even comprehend it. Um, we want to be careful that we don't fall into that same trap of being a spectator rather than someone who speaks up for those who are being mistreated. There was a time when Nero was, it was after the fire in Rome, and Nero was exacting particularly cruel justice, and he had kind of an advisor who would dream up these cruel things to do to the Christians in the Colosseum. I'm sparing you the details. I've read a book about it. Um, it reminds you of some of the stuff that the Nazis would do later. The thing that was somewhat telling was that as the Christians were suffering, and not being angry, being brave, being fearless to go to their death, being fearless to suffer, some of the spectators couldn't take it anymore. While they didn't risk their lives and try to stand up for the Christians, they did leave the event. Some would leave the event, and uh, if Nero would have a repeat event the following day, he'd have trouble getting an audience or a full audience that time. And he had so much trouble eventually getting Roman people to come watch people suffer that he was he would do things like give them free bread if they would come. It was called bread and circuses. And it was to try to placate the people and kind of make them stupid and not think. But a strange thing happened. As these Christians were dying, um, as they were being humble and um, sacrificing their lives, just going meekly to these awful deaths. Even though we had witnesses of the, of the resurrection and, and Christian people who were going to God and were, were leaving this earth through death, um, the reputation for the Christ followers and for the power in Christianity actually began to grow. So Nero couldn't kill the Christians fast enough because he could kill one and then two Romans would want to become a Christian in the following months for that one witness. And then another one that he would kill, a whole Roman family of five people would secretly be baptized. And so you have this phenomenon beginning where the blood of the martyrs is the seed of the church in this divine paradox. So Colosseum, these are some of the things that I thought about when I was there. I thought, what if I saw someone my own age and she looked me in the eye right before she was dying and would that leave an impression? And yeah, I think it would change everything. Early Rome. So 700 BC, the Latins build the Tiber River villages. And then 100 years later, the Etruscan kings control those villages. And 100 years later, the Etruscans are kicked out and you just have the Roman villages. Romans are a combination of Etruscan culture and Latin culture. You can definitely see both. And so for Etrus the Etruscan people lived in this region here. And then the Etruscans expanded beyond and that was occurring between 750 and 500 BC now the geographic site of Rome what what's going to be the foundation for this huge world powerhouse eventually so it's located on a river the Tiber River which leads out to the Mediterranean Sea so you've got the trade potential there a fertile soil, which we've always talked about rivers and irrigation, it's easy to defend because it's built on a hill overlooking flat plains. So if an enemy was going to come to Rome, you could see the enemy a long way off. Uh, 